Why are black people fleeing the ghetto? I was just reading earlier today that the city of Chicago, Illinois has the number one exodus rate of minorities in the entire country right now. Do you guys know that since 2015, the city of Chicago has had hundreds of thousands of blacks leave Chicago. Their tax base is shrinking and dwindling more and more and more. And you're starting to see this trend in other liberal one cities. Where I grew up in Detroit, every time I'm in that area, I always stop by my old neighborhood. My old neighborhood is a ghost town. It really is. It's still a bad area. There's still a lot of crime in the area. There's still a lot of blight and abandoned houses and burned down houses that have yet to be knocked down. But a lot of inner cities are starting to turn into ghost towns. And the reason why is because black people don't want to live in the hood any more than white people do. And it's nothing against black people. There's nothing at all racist about not wanting to live in the ghetto. It's not selling out. It's not forgetting about where you came from. It's about wanting what's best for yourself. That's all it is. Now, I know that there's lots of blacks and even some whites that have noble character intentions and they deliberately stay in the hood. I don't know if that's because they, at the end of the day, they can't afford to move out. So they come up with these noble reasons to cover up the fact that they really just can't afford to live anywhere else. And that's not a knock on them. But at least be honest with yourself about why you choose to deliberately live in the ghetto. If you have an opportunity to move out, you should move out as soon as you can. In fact, that's part of black culture is getting out of the hood as soon as you can. There are dozens of rap songs that talk about the hallmark of black success is not only getting out of the hood, but getting your family out of the hood. As soon as a rapper or a basketball player makes it big and start making his millions, what's the very first major purchase that they make? A house for their mom, a mansion for their mom out of the hood. Tupac rapped about it. Biggie rapped about it. Jay-Z rapped about it. Kanye raps about it. T.I. rapped about it. Listen to what T.I. had to say about it. How could they be so ignorant? Look what hip hop done done. It's the loudest the run of business. Legitimated our money's Got us out of the ghettos and relocated our mommies. I made it all the way here. Ain't no way you taking it from me. So excuse me, Oprah, honey. I'm sorry. Really. Everybody wants to get out of the hood. Your moms might know not, you know, might not care about some of the other wars, but mommy knows the Grammys. Ma, do respect us, period. Mm -hmm. You know so, what I'm saying? Y'all just bought her a house. Shout out to mom. He did. Telling you. Mama. How would that feel about your mom's <laughs> a house, man? Feel good. Accomplishments on accomplishments. Blessings on blessings. That, we, ain't gotta, she, we ain't got to wait on no another guy. She ain't got to wait on nobody, and she got it from her boys. Is that something you had on, like, a vision board or something? Like, I'm going to buy my mama a house. Is that the feeling that like, I made it now? We bought, me and Take out bought my mama a house. Right. And we had to. We got to. Got to take care of mama. <gasps> Look how fucking big this is. Oh my God, this is amazing. That's my fucking pool. That's my pool. That's my pool. You know I'm going to jump in it. You already know I'm going to jump in it. Thank you, Slim Jimmy, for this beautiful house. Shout out to Ray Sherman. I love you. I love you, sons. All right? Oh, shit! <laughs> what up, Mark? New crib. My mom in that spot. Christmas lit. <laughs> so all these black hip hop cultural icons, basketball players, entrepreneurs, rappers, you name it. As soon as we can get out of the hood, we get out of the hood. The Obamas don't live in the hood. They live in a $15 million mansion. Even when the Obamas were based in Chicago, they didn't live in Chicago proper. They didn't live in this actual city of Chicago. They lived in the suburbs of it, in the good parts. Their pastor, Jeremiah Wright, had a nice house in the suburbs. None of these Democrat politicians that, that love to give lip service to how they're all for the poor and the downtrodden, none of them live in the hood. They don't live in the hood. Even the mayor of Detroit lives in Manoogian Mansion off Lakeshore Drive out in Gross Point. So I'm not bashing people who live in the hood. I'm not, because I'm from the hood. 
and those are my people. But at, sooner or later, your self-esteem starts to kick in and you start to say, you know what? I want to go to a, just a healthier environment. I don't like walking outside and seeing all this broken glass, seeing all these weeds growing through the concrete, seeing all these abandoned houses, seeing all these burned down houses. Who wants to live in an area like that? Unless you have some kind of missionary mission and God is calling you to live in that area, why would anyone in their right minds who can actually afford to move out not move out? Again, I'm not bashing the people who cannot afford to move out, but we need to be trying to help those people. And the best way to help those people who cannot move out of the hood is to get rid of the Democrats that have been running the city of Detroit into the ground for the last 60 years. There hasn't been a Republican who has had any power or control in Detroit since, what, the 1950s? Republicans haven't touched Detroit in, in a half of a century. All the poverty and the blight and the crime rate and the destruction and everything that we see when we go to the hood, that's all from the Democrats, man. That all happened on their dimes. Republicans don't have any power to do anything about that. They won't touch Republicans. They won't vote for Republicans. The Flint water crisis, that entire council, the entire Flint water council was a black council. Flint has been run by blacks. All these torn down cities, the police chiefs are black, the mayors are black, the representatives are black. Everybody's, it's black. It's black on black mismanagement. And yet they blame whitey. They blame the crackers. They blame white people because that's part of the communist playbook. That's part of Alinskyism. Read Saul Alinsky with Rules for Radicals. He's all about creating a distraction game and gaslighting people to where you're the actual victimizer, you're the actual predator, and yet you make other people who have nothing to do with your games of predation, you turn them into the predator. The Democrats have been doing that to the Republicans for decades, and I'm sick of it. I wish the Republicans would stand up for themselves more. Maybe guys like me and other black conservatives need to come along and do it. Maybe we need to, I don't know, coalesce and come together, which we are, and shout with one big voice that we want what's best for black people. We do. But the fact is, if you choose to stay in the hood, if you can afford to get out of the hood, and yet for some reason you choose to stay there, I hope you're single. I hope you don't have any kids because you owe it to your kids to give them the best education that they can get. And I'm sorry to say, but they ain't gonna get it in Detroit. Detroit public schools are some of the worst schools in the entire nation. How do I know that? Because I was a victim of Detroit public schools. That's right. I don't like to usually call myself a victim, but when I look back on my childhood, I was a victim of the crappy Detroit public school system. My mom is a retired teacher. She's a retired substitute teacher of Detroit public schools. When I used to see the corruption that she used to have to deal with, it was terrible. So I am sick and tired of Republicans and white people being blamed for the sins and the crimes of black people in power. Much like whites are being blamed for reparations, even though slavery was invented by blacks. You guys have seen my video on that. I'm not going to tangent on that. But that's a fact. So I, I moved out of the hood because one day I'm gonna build an awesome family. And when my wife and I come together and we start having kids, if we're not gonna homeschool, which we, we might, I don't know, we have to pray and discern that. But if we're not gonna homeschool, I want the option to be able to send them to the best school. That might be a good public school. I'm not entirely opposed to public schools, although it'd have to be a pretty good one. They might go to Catholic school. I'm work, you know, I've worked hard to be able to afford that. But I don't want to live in a zip code that has a terrible school district. I owe it to my kids to live in a good zip code because I owe it to their future. I know how underprepared I was when I was in Detroit public schools. I did end up graduating from Southfield High School. But when I went to Northwestern uh, on West Grand Boulevard, when I went to some other high schools in Detroit, I was woefully unprepared. And when I switched over to Southfield High School, I was so far behind and I had to believe it or not, I had a really hard time because I was underprepared. I wasn't prepared. High school is supposed to prepare you for college. Each thing is supposed to prepare you for the next level, right? Preschool prepares you for kindergarten. Kindergarten prepares you for elementary. Elementary prepares you for high school. High school is supposed to prepare you for college. College is supposed to prepare you to work in the real world, although a lot of people that go to college will tell you that's not the case. You know, even, even, even college is supposed to prepare you for grad school, if that's how far you want to go. But if you're going to crappy schools, 
and crappy school districts, there's a lot of links in those chains of preparation that you're missing out on. That's one reason not to live in the hood if you can afford not to. Another reason is why would you want to live somewhere where it's not safe? I'm in a safe area right now. Do you really think I could walk around in Brightmore shouting into my phone <laughs> and not be messed with, not get run up on by some people, not get robbed or killed? Listen, I grew up in Brightmore. I know how risky that would be. I'm not stupid. I got street smarts. Look at this place. Got a guy cutting the grass, nice cut grass. I couldn't do this in the hood. I couldn't educate people and get my voice out there, be the voice of the voiceless like this outside without having to worry about my safety and my personal well-being. Could I get robbed here? Yes, but chances are much, much lower that would happen. And in most cases, it would be someone from the inner city that came into the suburbs to do that, because that, that does happen. So that's the thing. You know, I've, I've been out in Oakland County since 2003. I'll never forget it. I was living on I-96 in Tireman at the time. I've been out on my own for a very long time. I moved out of home when I was 21 years old. Yeah, it may, I'm telling you, it makes a man out of you getting out on your own. It's interesting, if you look at all the moral exhortations in scripture, there's thousands of proverbs, there's thousands of moral exhortations all throughout scripture. You know what the very first moral exhortation in scripture was? The very first one. The very first ethical advice, the very first way that scripture teaches us how to live, the inspired words of the Holy Spirit, was Genesis 2, 24 through 25, that a man leaves his mother and father and cleaves to his wife. So getting out, of, getting out on your own as soon as you can, it makes a man out of you fast. It really, really does. Now, I know there's some people who can't afford to live out on their own, but I was really eager to get out on my own. So I left home when I was 21. And uh, I moved to <laughs> I, I moved to I-96 in Tyreman. It was a really bad area. It still is. I lived on Beachwood. 96 in Tyreman on Beachwood in a duplex. And I'll never forget, it was late 2003. I came home from first Friday morning mass. I'm a practicing Catholic. I had this devotion to the Sacred Heart. I was in the process of trying to make the nine first Fridays. So I, I went to first Friday mass out in Livonia on Nine Mile in Middle Belt at St. Colette, the late Father Dan Havron said the mass that morning, I'll never forget. And uh, I came home all the way back to the hood and I couldn't get into my front door. I couldn't understand why is my front door, I can't get in. I, I, I was fiddling with the key, I was unlocking it, I couldn't get in. It turns out that it was deadlocked from inside. I went around to the back, the back was kicked in. Okay, I was on the phone with my girlfriend at the time. I'm like, I think somebody broke into my house. She was freaking out on the phone, like, go call the cops. Don't go in there by yourself. Somebody could still be in there. I didn't listen to her. I just, I went in <laughs> and sure enough, I was broken into. Now, all they took were my video games. They didn't take my computers. Thank God that would have put me out of business because I had just started my own business online. That would have completely put me under had I lost my computer. So God protected me there, but they took all my PlayStation games. Um, it's gonna get loud here with the grass cutter guy. Um, but they made a mess of my place. They were probably looking for cash. It might have been some kids, who knows. But I was making enough money at that point to move out of the hood. So what do I do? That day, I got an apartment out in Novi. I moved out to Novi. And I've been out of the hood ever since. I've lived in Oakland County that whole time. And, uh, and that, that was my story. That's how I got out of the hood. So it's starting to get loud here. I'll probably have to end the video. But all I'm saying, for those of you who choose to still live in the hood for virtuous reasons, you can afford to move out, but for some reason you still wanna stay in the hood to make a difference, listen, I commend you. But if you have kids, you better be willing to homeschool them because they're gonna get a crappy education. Because those Democrats that you most likely vote for, they're, all, they're hardcore opposed to, opposed to school choice. They wanna keep these kids in the hood. They wanna keep these kids poor and uneducated and misinformed and indoctrinated, which is what happens in these public schools so that when they're old enough to vote, they can vote Democrat. That's what they are, they're Democrat factories. That's what Detroit public schools are, that's what most inner city public schools are. They are Democrat, liberal, socialist breeding grounds that teach kids fake, watered down, revisionist black history. You will never hear about Anthony Johnson. 
the very first black slave owner who owned a black slave. You're never going to hear about that at Detroit Public Schools. Are you kidding me? You're not going to hear about anything that's going to wake people's eyes up. So if you're still living in the hood, make sure you homeschool. Make sure you give your kids real history. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.